Hey everyone, my name is Monroe Mann with Break Diving, joined today by Bavia in New Jersey and Britris in Nigeria, and I'm in New York. Today we're going to be talking about uh, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, and as you can tell, this is a Break Diving book club event. And uh, for those of you on YouTube, you're welcome to join breakdiving.io. It's an awesome, inspiring social media community, and we have all these cool events. Uh, so you can actually join and participate. Uh, in the meantime, if you haven't read the book or if you uh, don't want to know anything about it, probably don't watch this because we're going to talk a few about the things that happen in the book and uh, don't want you to uh, feel disappointed. So there might be a few bit of a spoilers because we're going to talk about the plot. So guys, I was talking before here about... Uh, so I wanted to go over the plot with you because both of you said that it, it's a, oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Let me do that first. Uh, it's a little bit difficult reading. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I agree. At the same time, someone who knows and appreciates English will tell you that this is one of the finest books written in the English language. Ooh. And it is, it's very funny. It's very inspiring. It talks about psychology and human nature, and it's also fanciful. So there are so many reasons to read it. It's a great book. It's a great plot, but you can also improve your grammar and vocabulary, and you can learn a lot about psychology and human nature. So I don't want to go through the whole plot line here, but I just want to go over the basics of it so that you'll know what to look for, because it'll make it a little bit easier to read. Okay. So we're just going to read this part right here, uh, right here. So, uh, uh, Beatrice, do you want to read the uh, read this uh, read the first sentence, Beatrice, and then Bobby, you read the second sentence. So here, you read this, Beatrice, right here. Go ahead. Okay. The Can you see my screen? Are you with me? Yep. Okay. the The picture of the Dorian Gray begins on a beautiful summer day in Victorian England where Lord Harry Walton, an opinionated man, is observing the sensitive artist Basil Hartwell painting the portrait of Dorian Gray, a handsome young man who is Basil ultimate, sorry? Muse. Muse, yeah. Muse. Good, so uh, it's Lord Henry Watton just come the pronunciation. Again. Yeah, the that pronunciation, come again. Lord Henry Watton. Okay. Right here, Lord Henry Watton. Yeah. And this word is opinionated. Opinionated, and here it's yeah. Basil okay. Hallwood. Ba is it Basil? Basil, yeah. Okay, Hallwood, yes. And then Dorian Gray. Yeah, Dorian Gray. Cool. And uh, a muse, a muse yeah. is someone who is your inspiration. Okay. And someone you really look up to. So okay. sometimes people say that they're inspired, an artist is inspired by someone else. So you would say, oh, uh, Vincent van, van Gogh is my muse. Um, okay. I mean, what, what yeah. Is he talking about a person of uh, that has opinion? A muse doesn't have to have an opinion. A muse can really just be somebody who inspires somebody else. No, I'm talking about the opinion. Uh, oh, opinionated. Opinion. An opinionated yeah. man is someone who, who not only has opinions, but they're very strong and very controversial. <laughs> okay. So like, maybe you have a friend, no matter what you say is, oh my gosh, that is the worst refrigerator. I will never buy a refrigerator made by that company because this is like, oh, come on, you're so opinionated about everything. Mm. Uh, but usually it's more controversial things. It's like, well, I, about something like very controversial, like religion or abortion or, or murder, or it's and got some opinion, very strong mm. uh, about that. So we saying that Lord, and you'll notice when you're reading Lord Henry Watton, Watton, every, like almost every word out of his mouth is some outrageous opinion. Mm that he has about something going on in his life or in, or in Basil's life or in, in England. And so 
a lot of the funniest things happen because of what Lord Watton says, because yeah. he's got these opinions and things on that. So you look for them. Uh, and then, so the basic idea is that in that first, did you guys read at least the first five pages? Yes, I, I did. I did. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter if you haven't yet, but in, like, in those first eight pages or so, you're going to find uh, this guy, Basil Hallward, is, is working on a painting. Okay. And this guy, Lord Henry Watton, walks in, which is one of Basil's friends, and starts talking to him and finds out that the portrait is of this guy named Dorian Gray. Okay. Who, that, who Basil met at a party. And, yeah. and Dor uh, Basil is this handsome, uh, excuse me, Dorian Gray is this handsome young man and, and Basil finds him fascinating. He wants okay. to become Dorian Gray. I mean, everything about him is awesome, amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, while sitting for the painting, because Dorian comes back, mm -hmm. um, Dorian listens to Lord Henry giving his hedonistic worldview, hedonistic. Oh, by the way, Bob, Bob you read this, you, this sentence here, right there. Hedonistic. <clears throat> yeah. While sitting for the painting, Dorian listens to Lord Henry exposing, exposing his- Espousing. Espousing his hedonistic, hedonistic worldview and begins to think that beauty, beauty is the only aspect of life worth pursuing, prompting Dorian to wish that his portrait would age mm. instead of himself. Good. Would age instead of himself. His portrait would age. Okay. So basically what's going to happen is Dorian is going to hear what Lord Henry is saying and he starts to think, I wish that my portrait would age instead of me and so what starts to happen is dorian in real life starts to become younger and younger and the dorian gray in the painting starts to become older and older okay. and so that's basically what's going to happen in the book and you'll you'll start to see what well, what does he then do now that he's becoming younger and younger and it's it's it shows how things don't work out you know as you wanted and 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 but it, throughout the whole thing there are so many funny things that get said uh, by the different characters it's not necessarily something funny that happens in the book it's just the way that the person says it mm. And, and in the circumstances, it's very, like for us as the reader, it's very, very amusing and mm -hmm. funny. So what I would recommend, don't read this. I just found, you can find this by searching on the internet. Yeah. Uh, you can find a full summary here if you're getting confused. You can also find all these things, like there are a lot of different items. Here's a thing showing the plot and the rising action, the climax, the resolution. Here's mm -hmm. the plot and the turning point dramatic elements you can find I'm, here, I'm sure these are notes that somebody i don't think we can it's going to be too blurry that one mm. and so there are plenty of things that you can find online here's a quiz and worksheet plot and characters from dorian gray and you can also if we go to all like if we go to here do picture of dorian gray let's just say study study guide sure there's going to be one on here i don't think i think the spark notes you have to pay for but maybe it's there no wow <laughs> is it here preface yeah chapter one chapter two so uh, obviously this is not the substitute for doing the reading yourself mm. uh, the, the fun of reading picture of dorian gray is how he writes and the vocabulary you get and the way he shares his sentences and things like that. But mm. certainly you can read this uh, plot uh, summary if you need help. But I don't want to tell you how everything happens because that's no fun. Yeah. 
it will be pro it will be better for us to read it throughout. I, yeah, I'll, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, it will be better for us to go through it detail, and uh, as you have said earlier on, it will help our vocabulary and understanding the grammatical construction of sentences. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. and uh, we can find it here since. I'm just trying to think. I wonder if we should do a little bit of the reading together. Okay. Of 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 the book. And yeah, I guess we could do this. Let's just read these first three first uh, you know first two pages together. And uh, that was on chapter one. Yeah. So this is chapter one. And <clears throat> so okay. the studio was filled with the rich odor of roses. And when the light summer wind stirred amidst the trees of the garden, there came through the open door the heavy scent of the lilac or the more delicate perfume of the pink flowering thorn. From the corner of the divan, divan I think it's divan or divan, I'm not sure, of Persian saddlebags on which he was lying, smoking, as usual, innumerable cigarettes, Lord Henry Watton could just catch the gleam of the honey sweet and honey colored blossoms of the laburnum, whose trem tremulous branches seemed hardly able to bear the burden of a beauty so flame-like as theirs. And now and then the fantastic shadows of birds in flight flitted across the long tusser silk curtains that were stretched in front of the huge window, producing a kind of momentary Japanese effect and making him think of those pallid jade-faced painters who in an art that is necessary necessarily immobile, seek to convey the sense of swiftness and motion. So the key here to remember, just when you're reading something that's a kind of a literary, this is not a action film. Okay. It's, I mean, here's one huge sentence. In fact, the whole sentence is from here to here. Mm. And he's literally talking of the view that Lord Henry Watton has outside the window. That he can catch the gleam of the honey sweet and honey colored blossoms of a laburnum. I guess that's like a tree. And his branches can't bear the beauty of the beauty, so flame like. And now and then you'd see some shadows of birds flying across the sky along the curtains. And they make this interesting effect that's similar to something that happens in Japan. And he makes him think of those painters, those Japanese painters in an art, in a Japanese art that's so immobile, yet they're trying to convey this sense of swiftness and motion. So all of that was just to talk about Henry Watton inside on these saddlebags, lying down mm -hmm. smoking his cigarettes, and he's describing what Henry Watton sees outside the window. Yeah. Mm. So technically none of that is really important for the plot. You don't need, it doesn't matter if you don't understand a lot of these words. I don't understand laburnum. I don't understand the word of tussor, tussor. And yeah, so those are the two words that I don't know. Maybe you don't know a few more, but never be discouraged about that. Yeah, I, I've been speaking English for 43 years and I write better than most people I know. And I don't know two of these words. Hmm. So. Let's find, let's just find out together what tussor means and because tussor and what was the other word? Oh, and laburnum. Let's find out. Laburnum. What's the meaning of tremolos? What did you say? Tremolios. Is it tremolios? Oh, here it is. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a type of small tree. Okay. Okay. So laburnum okay. is a type of small tree. Okay. So that's fine. Let's see if we can find a picture there it is laburnum right here so it kind of looks it's got it looks like a weeping willow sort of oh look at that that's a laburnum tree hmm. very beautiful okay. and then what was the <laughs> other one so he's looking at the blossoms the honey a honey sweet and honey colored blossom of the laburnum and now mm. you can so that now you can see exactly what he's looking out the window for and let's also look up, let's look, look up tusser, tusser silk. Let's see what tusser is. Tusser. 
Tusser. Tusser. Is that, did I spell that right? Okay, that is true. Yeah, I think. Where is a Tusser? No, oh, it's O-R-E. Yeah. O-R-E. Tusser, all. Tusser, oh. so it's always Tusser silk. Okay. Also spelled Tussa, Tushar, Tussar. Produced from the larvae of special silkworms. Okay. Here's the dictionary definition. See what that says. A strong, coarse, brownish Indian silk. Hmm. You should know that, <laughs> I heard of it, but I was like, not sure. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, from the cocoons of an oriental Saturnid silkworm, a fabric oh. woven from the silk, the silkworm producing this silk. Let's hmm. go back and look at the pictures now of, of what a tussor. We have a tussor, like a tussor silkworm. Yeah, that. Mm. Aha! Mm. There it is. A tussor silkworm. Interesting. So, like, that's the silk. Now, what does it look? What does the actual silk look like? Does that look very? Does it look very? Oh, look! I guess because you make a lot of these Indian. Mm. Dresses from it. The saris, silk saris, we wear most of them made from that. Yes. Interesting. The silk sari. Mm. I see a lot of bavias here. Yeah, it's <laughs> regular wear. Uh, yeah, not regular function. Hmm. So I mean, the, I guess I mean the point here is I mean just from this one little sentence here, mm -hmm. we have this beautiful yeah. picture in our head now of yeah. those laburnum trees and those blossoms, those yellow honey colored blossoms. And uh, then we were also talking about the, so the tussor silk curtains, those curtains are what are inside. He's looking through the window and those curtains are part of the window dressing. So uh, let's, uh, let's do it with this one here. Uh, Beatrice, why don't you read this one and see if you can explain it to us. <laughs> mm, the first two sentences, they are even tough. The solemn murmur of, uh, of the bees shouldering their way through the long, unmoved grass or cycling with monotonous insistence round the black crooked uh, spice of the early June holy hoops seems to make the stillness more oppressive. And the dim roar of London was like the burden note of a distance organ. Okay, so let's first do the pronunciation because some of the words are, cor are not correct. So repeat after me. And, and this is in both of you can do it if you want, but sullen. Okay, the sullen. Murmur. Murmur. Shouldering. Shouldering, shouldering. The long unmoan. Okay, the, the long unmoan, moan. Good, the long unmoan grass. Monotonous. The long unmoan grass. Monotonous. Monotonous. Okay, monotonous. Good. Uh, spires. Okay, aspires. Not aspires, just spires. Spires. So black, um, black, black crocketed spires. Yeah. Black crocketed, crocketed spires of the early, hollyhocks. Hollyhocks. And bo Borden. 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 Okay, Borden notes. Borden notes. Okay. So again, there are some words here that I don't know. Let's do the ones that I don't know first, and then we can go through any of the words that you don't know. So the first word that I don't know is croc black crocketed. What the heck is a black crocketed? Is it kind of insect mostly? Okay. Black crocketed. So that's not coming up. Let's see, wait. Hmm. Black crocketed. Spies of the religion. Oh look. Spies, right? It came up black crocketed. <laughs> <laughs> the solemn murmur, black crocketed. So it's finding it there. So the only place that it really comes up in writing clearly is in here. Let's see what crocketed means. Yeah. Crocketed. 
crocketed spire. Aha. Uh -huh. A crocket is a hook-shaped decor in Gothic architecture. Oh. Oh, that is. Do you see how it's? It looks mm -hmm. kind of twisted, like a hook, I guess, maybe. Mm-hmm. The name derives from the dim, dim, diminutive of the French croc, meaning hook, due to the resemblance of crockets to a bishop's crossier. So here, a bishop. Here's a crocket yeah. inspired. Oh, like this. I see. Okay. Maybe. Maybe they have all these little divots mm -hmm. in them. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's how to, to describe some structures. Yeah, I think so. So it's talking, well, the spire, because it talks about Brack Crockett spire. A spire are these things on the top of churches, these pointy things. Yeah. Spire. So, okay, Black Crockett spires of the early June hollyhocks. I don't know what a hollyhock is. Hollyhock. Mm. So that looks like it's a flower too. And if you ever grown hollyhocks, you may notice the not so pretty foliage at the bottom. Okay, so we can see holy hollyhocks, hollyhocks here. So that's a flower. Good. So then we talk about the early June hollyhocks. Oh, I see. Here he's calling those. So these hollyhocks, these flowers, are the things that have the black crocketed spires. So maybe when the hollyhocks are growing first, they have these little black things coming out of them. Do we see any black on these yeah. hollyhocks? Let's see on uh, images. Hollyhocks. Okay, yeah, they're flowers. Yeah, maybe there's something black on the spires. Maybe maybe when they're coming up to see these little blooms, maybe they're black first, mm -hmm. and it kind of looks like a spire. That could be why. Okay, so then the last one I didn't know was Bord Borden or Bordon. I think it's Borden, but let's find out. Borden. Borden. Um, the drone pipe of a bagpipe, a low-pitched tone. Let's see how it's pronounced. Uh, Borden. 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 So it's the sound of a bagpipe or a low pitch or a low pitched instrument. So let's see what it's talking about. The dim roar of London was like the Borden note of a distant organ. There we go, because an organ, of course, is an instrument. So the Borden is very sound. Interesting. You guys know how a bagpipe sounds? Mm -hmm. No. I want to show you because you'll know what it's talking about. This drone of a bagpipe. Mm -hmm. um, but is it on the instrument? The drone the pipe is the sound. It's the oh. Let me see. Uh, sound mm. ah. of bagpipe. Let's see if we hear it here. Oh, okay, this one, bagpipe. Do you hear oh, that? Yeah. So that's the board in. And then he starts playing. Listen, but you'll hear the burr all the time. Mm. Bad. Mm. Backbite. Just like the home. Okay. So that lower sound that we're hearing is the board. Um, could it be that instrument? Say that again. I said, could it be that, uh, that musical instrument, just like a flute? What was the question? No, I the, the picture, the picture over there. Could it be the instrument that makes that sound? Which instrument? This one here? Yeah. Backpipe. That's what's making that sound. Yeah. It's called a bagpipe, right? Yeah, it's called a bagpipe. And you notice he, he starts playing. Mm -hmm. Backpipe. Yeah. You know what? I want to learn how to play bagpipe. It looks like a fun instrument. <laughs> and so great. So that, those are those words. Now, what about? Uh, do you guys? Do you know what sullen means? No, I didn't know sullen. Okay, sullen is is sort of downtrodden and sad. Let's look up the definition. Uh, uh -huh. I don't want to give you my definition. Let's look up the. Uh, so we're going to use the dictionary to look them all up, just in case. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, showing irritation or ill humor by gloomy silence, gloomy ill humor, sluggish, gloomy. So like I said, it's kind of sad, sullen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, 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 we go back to the sullen murmur. Do you know what a murmur is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's a murmur? It's kind of continuous, this voice. No, it's, no. Like, it's like low, low whispering. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's look it up. I said we were going to use the form of uh, disagreement, peace, murmuring. So say it again. Good. Mm. As a murmuring, right? Can you say it again? Okay. So it's a low continuous sound. So it could be voices like whispering. It could be the wind or the trees. So we go back here, the sullen murmur of the bees. Mm, now it so makes sense. Talking them. about these, uh, the laburnum tree. And so there must be some bees out there, mm -hmm. okay? Shouldering their way through the long unmown grass. Do you know what unmown means? Yes. Um, so when you cut the grass, you mow the grass. Most, yeah. So if it's unmown, it means it's not cut. Mm -hmm. And okay. the, these bees are circling with monotonous insistence. Do you know what monotonous is? The same no, sir. path. Monotonous, yeah, it's the exact same tone. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's give well, let's get the full the real de definition. Monotonous, lacking in variety, one mm -hmm. note, very mm -hmm. little okay. inflection. Mm -hmm. Okay, so monotonous insistence round the black crocketed spires of the early June hollyhocks, we all understand that, seem to make the stillness yeah. more oppressive. And the dim roar of London was like the boredom note of a distant organ. So, Bob, you re read it again now that we know what every word means in this. And go ahead. Yeah, the sullen murmur of the bees shouldering they await through the long unwoven grass are circling with monotonous, monotonous, monotonous. Inst monotonous ins insistence mm -hmm. round the black crocket spires of the early June hollyhocks seem to make the stillness more oppressive. And the dim roar of London was like the burden note of a distant organ. Good. So now mm -hmm. each of us read it to yourselves now and try to picture in your head. Now that we understand exactly every word, mm -hmm. read this whole sentence and see if you can picture what 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 our friend Lord Henry Watton is experiencing. Oppressive mm. means oppressive. Let's look at it. oppressive means it's it's so heavy on you. Sometimes okay. depression is very oppressive. Sometimes a uh, uh, a a government can be oppressive on the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oppressive, burdensome, unjustly harsh, tyrannical, causing discomfort, distress, okay. grievous. So the, um, the stillness was oppressive. So let's go back again. Now read this to yourself and yeah. see if you have a better idea, a better picture. The solemn moment of the bee children, their way through the long unmown grass, was circling with monoton monotonous insistence around the black light of the early. Can I say it was describing uh, the sound? The sound of what? Of bees. The bees is part of it, but there's there are other sounds as well. What Children. other sounds are there? The bagpipe. That's there's no bagpipe. No, yeah, that note of that some instrument. Yeah. No, there's no there's no instrument. It says hmm. it's it says it's like. Okay. <laughs> so what's making the noise? Bees. No. Huh? 
The bees is dim making yes, roar correct. of London. Good. What does that mean? Yeah. The dim roar of London. It's like the people sound like panting. Yeah, sound. It's just, it's all the sounds of whatever it is, in London, ah, in New okay. York City. The sounds would be beeping horns, people mm -hmm. yelling, police mm -hmm. sirens. The 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 dim roar of London would be whatever the sounds are are heard in a big city in England. Mm -hmm. So we've got this very sullen, sort of sad sound of these bees mm -hmm. weaving their way through these uh, through the long unmown grass, and mm -hmm. they're circling around the hollyhocks, which look like these black crocketed spires. And he's saying that these bees and the bzz, 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 it made mm -hmm. the stillness even more oppressive. So it seems like to me it's not, unless I don't know if he says what part of season is, but I think bees are usually during the summer, and summer sometimes can be very still mm. on a day, and then you just hear this dim sound of the London noise in the way distant. So I don't know if they're in London, and he, and he just hears a dumb roar because the window because the they're far away, or or is it is it a dim roar of London because the the window is closed. I don't think the window is open, is it? Um, does it say that? Because he said that there's the uh, let's see in the the curtains. Here's the curtains, the Tusser silk curtains that we talked about in front of the huge window. Yeah, so they may not be open, but the fact that he can hear yeah. the murmur of bees. <laughs> I think the window must be open. The, the window, the, the window must be opened uh, with the curtain released. So, yeah, I'm, I, it sounds like the window's probably open. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, now I'm not telling you that you need to read every paragraph with as much detail as we just did this. I understand. But, I can tell you that you can read this book 20 times. Mm. And even if you're a native speaker like me, you're going to find words that you don't know. <laughs> and, and so if you don't understand words in here, don't feel bad. Neither did I. Also, this was written in the late 1800s, I believe. So yeah. I'm sure some of these words maybe are not used as, mo as often as they are. Yes. Uh, and it's possible. I don't know if laburnum trees and hollyhocks are only in England. Hmm. Maybe I've never heard of them because I've never seen them in the United States. Or maybe I'm just not an arborist. So I and they're not common around here. So I don't. But I mean, every one of his paragraphs has amazing. Think about this. This is two sentences, guys. Hmm. Most people, if they have something this long, it's going to be two terrible run on sentences. But he writes in such a great way that it's very artistic and, and beautiful. And so just mm. think about how he did this. The first was talking about the studio itself. Then it talks about where Lord Henry is and talking about what's happening outside. Then the next paragraph yes. is talking about in the actual room. And here we're mm. talking about, so, um, We'll go to this next paragraph, and this will be the last part for today, just to kind of give you an idea. So <clears throat> do either of you want to read it, or do you want me to read it? <laughs> Let me read it. OK, go ahead. So, you correct some of my pronunciation. Okay. Yep, In the mental room, clumped to an upright ease, ease. easel to the full length, sorry, okay, to the full length portrait of a young man of extraordinary personal beauty. And in front of it, some little distance away, was sitting the artist himself, Basil Hallward, whose sudden disappearance some years ago caused at the time some public excitement and gave rise to end to so many strange conjecture. Good. Now, what word is this? Conjecture. <laughs> no, the one that I highlighted. 
Okay, sorry. You highlighted. Is it up? I'm I'm sharing my screen. Do you see? Search public excitement. Such, yes, yeah, such. So okay. just the hard words here are easel. Yeah, easel. Mm -hmm. Easel and Extraordinary. and conge strange conjectures. So an easel is what a artists use to paint on. Okay. It's the uh, I'll, just so you can see a, a picture of it. Um, easel. These are easels. These things. Mm -hmm. And easel. let's look at uh, let's look up conjecture. It's conjecture is kind of like a guess. Okay. Let's see. Okay, uh, this is easel. And here's conjecture: the formation of an opinion without sufficient evidence for proof. It's an opinion, a guess, like I said, mm -hmm. speculation, and uh, to form conjecture. So basically you're coming up with a theory. So, and so since Beatrice uh, read this, Bavia, can you tell us what it means? What happens here? Okay, now come back to the okay. page. So, Oh yeah, at the center of the room, there was a portrait of a young man. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Person in front of it, somewhere else sitting there. Okay, well, there was a portrait and the artist itself set, uh, sitting in front of it. Good. It's, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I think he's disappeared some years. Uh, some years ago or some years back and uh, that are kind of um, specific, um, maybe it's like because of his disappearance it's like there was so much public excitement very mm -hmm. maybe, yeah, when that that that's exactly it Mm -hmm. so in, in the center of your room, there's mm -hmm. an easel, and there's the portrait of a young man. What you didn't say is that this man was extremely beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And then in front of it, there was the artist himself, Basil. Mm -hmm. And yes, he disappeared some time ago. I guess so for the last few years, no one has seen him. Mm -hmm. Or he disappeared. And at the time, it caused a lot of public excitement, and many people came up with those guesses their theories about what happened but we don't know yet at this time has he returned to society since then or not based earlier above uh, we don't know yet that how he found this guy dorian gray to make the portrait uh so right at this point we don't know but it seems like and i, I forget we'll have to i'll have to review it again if if he uh, i'm just rereading it again so i've got read the first 20 pages again uh, whether he's this thing, this party with Dorian Gray happened recently, or was it some time ago? I think it was very recently. So I think he's, I think he's back in the public eye again. And so anyway, my point being is you can understand this, I th but you cannot yeah. read it like you do the newspaper. Yes. You can't read it like it's a Tom Cruise Mission Impossible movie where you just sit back and don't think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to really think and every single sentence is filled with meaning and vocabulary. And yes. these are not run on sentences. Mm -hmm. They're very well written sentences and the grammar mm -hmm. is perfect, but you need to approach it in a very intellectual manner. So yes. if you can't I mean, my, my personal suggestion is to read through the book in one day okay. and fast, like the Mission Impossible thing, if you want, just so you can enjoy it and kind of, but don't be afraid to either A, slow down and just focus on a paragraph at a time and try to look up the words and get familiar with it, or 
read it. And then when you stop, stop for a little bit and get your bearing and make sure you understand, then continue going as fast as you can until you get confused again. <laughs> and, but like I said, I've read this book multiple times and mm. I still have found, I just learned four new vocabulary. I learned two new trees. Uh, I learned about some type of silk. I, I learned about the, the borden means the sound, a very low sound. I mean, this is really, if, if someone like me is learning, can you imagine how much the two of you are gonna learn by studying this book? I, uh, uh, I agree. And, and it's, uh, it, like I said, it's funny and it's an adventure and it's exciting about psychology and stuff. It's not a old boring book that's gonna be a difficult to read. Once you understand what's, I think now that you understand what the plot is and the storyline, mm -hmm. yeah. it's gonna make it so much easier for you to proceed. And another yeah. thing, thanks for uh, like different way to approach it and read yes. it again, rethink that way. I think, yes, it's going to be helpful a lot. It, it makes thing a lot and even with the vocabulary I think each day if we keep maybe 30 minutes or 15 minutes it's going to help a lot and notice how I went to dictionary.com for words mm -hmm. I didn't know how to pronounce mm -hmm. don't assume that you know how to pronounce it go to dictionary or Merriam-Webster or something and press play Yes. and listen to how it's pronounced. And you may want to hear how was it pronounced as an American? How is it pronounced as a, as a Brit? Because, you know, we'll, they'll say different, different things. Tomato, tomato. And uh, it, you can choose whichever one, but you should know that there are different pronunciations so you don't get confused if someone starts to say it in a different way. Uh, but so your homework is to, at, at, I would say at least to get up to page 15 okay. of the book and find one paragraph that you think is your favorite so far that you That's think the, the coolest vocabulary or the funniest expressions or the, the way the sentences are written is so smooth. And then the next time we have the book club event, you can share us what you found and okay. you'll do your analysis and explain to us what you think is special about it. Okay. And, uh, Sounds great, yeah. Cool. yeah. And of course we can continue chatting in the book club channel. So yeah. if you have questions about what does this word mean or this or that, definitely do that. Try to recruit some more of our members to, to pick up the book. Mm -hmm. um, with most of our book club events, the, the book itself remains a book club event for maybe two years. Okay. So mm -hmm. we'll be having Dorian Gray book club discussions for the next like every every two months or so or every month or something like that so mm -hmm. we'll get new people who join us and then and you'll soon be an expert and and can help other people who are trying to enjoy this this cool book yeah. but uh it's it's i'm so excited to be doing this book club event with this book because i've wanted to reread it again the last time i read it was in 2015 which is five years ago mm -hmm. and so it's exciting that it's it's uh I'm going to get to read it again and, and learn even more and, and laugh again and, and discuss it with you. So beautiful. Uh, yeah, yeah, good stuff. To those of you guys on YouTube, uh, you're welcome to join. It's You don't have to have finished the book. You can still join our book club events. Please come to breakdiving.io. Please click like, subscribe, and share this with your friends. And let's everybody say goodbye to our friends on YouTube. Bye-bye.